Hollywood, California, we present Gene Hersholt in a new Dr. Christian drama called Mr. Meeks, brought to you by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. Vaseline Hair Tonic is good news for men who are troubled with dry scalp. For this different hair tonic actually supplements the natural scalp oils, makes the hair soft and manageable. If you're bothered by itching scalp and loose dandruff scales, just give yourself a tingling massage with Vaseline hair tonic before your next shampoo. That, plus a few drops rubbed in every day before combing the hair, does the trick. It's simple, it's sensible. Get the good habit of taking care of your scalp with Vaseline hair tonic. And listen to this. The carton off a 40-cent bottle may help you win a World's Fair vacation free or $250 in cash. Wait for the details of the easy-to-enter World's Fair contest at the end of this program. Gene Hersholt's Dr. Christian drama for tonight, Mr. Meeks, is dedicated to all wives who love their husbands and want to make them over. Mr. Meeks is president of the Meeks Tent and Awning Company, which was founded by his grandfather. He lives with his wife and young son, Budge, in a comfortable house out on the river road. As the curtain rises, the scene is the Meeks' tasteful living room, where Mrs. Meeks is flying around the room, straightening up and scolding to Dr. Christian as she does so. Honestly, Dr. Christian, why is it that men have to throw the papers on the floor? Oh, they don't throw them, Eleanor. They just leave them. <laughs> For some woman to pick up, I know. I've been picking up seed catalogs and garden magazines and the Sunday paper after Gregory Meeks for 15 long years. Look at them. I have a good mind to throw the whole lot in the fire. Oh, don't do that. Why don't not? Do... It's just a constant temptation to Greg to dawdle around the house. Oh, that could be worse way to spend your time looking at your seed catalogs, couldn't it? Well, then, I <laughs> don't know what they'd be. Oh, come now, Eleanor, you can't fool me. You're devoted to Greg and you know it. <laughs> What if he does spend his time puttering around the yard? You have a lousy home, and Greg's a loyal husband. Yes, I know that. Gregory Meeks has never looked at another girl since we were in seventh grade. Oh, then why are you kicking about a harmless hobby? But you like... don't seem to understand that Greg would rather dig in a tulip bed than, than be president of a bank. He'd rather raise prized tomatoes than be the most... People have different ideals in life. Raising prized tomatoes might not be such a bad one. Dr. Christian... I want a husband who does things. Someone I can, I can brag about a little. Do you know what he's doing this weekend instead of going to the men's club dinner? No. He's taking Budge on an overnight hike. The frost isn't hardly out of the ground yet. Well, there's nothing better for a growing boy than getting out into the woods. But, Dr. Christian, Greg should be at that dinner. Every important man in this town will be there. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, I, I just can't stand having him dubbing around any longer. Dr. Christian, Greg's got to get back into the business or go into politics or do something worthwhile. Well, I have an idea which might be a step in the right direction. Oh, have you really? Tell me. Well, I'm going to ask him to serve as chairman of the Citizens Committee to work with Mayor Hewitt. Oh, that'd be marvelous. Well, what's that? <laughs> Greg and Bud. Didn't you ever hear them before? They do it all the time. You can hear them coming a mile away. <laughs> Eleanor? Ellie? Oh, hey. Uh, hello, Dr. Christian. Hello, Greg. Where did you come from? Oh, I dropped in to see you for a moment. Hello, Butch. Now, what's that you've got? Hello. That's a sun clock, Dr. Christian. It's a good one, too. Dad just made it. See, you set it up this way, and the shadow tells what time it is. We're going to take it along on the hike. So if we want to know what time it is, we can just set it up in the sun. Well, wouldn't it be easier to carry a watch? A watch? What do you want to know a watch for? Your mother's too efficient to bother with a sun clock, I'm afraid. I hear you're scorning the men's club dinner for a camping trip. Yes, I'd promised the boy. Greg, you know you could take him some other time just as well. Probably, but tonight was the night I said I'd do it, and it would take something more than a men's club dinner to make me disappointed. I'll go and see about the blanket roll in the canteen, Dad. I got the blankets out of the cedar chest, and we'll need a frying pan. Budge Meeks, which blankets are you using? Now, let me see them before you start doing any rolling. And don't take that good frying pan. Well, hurry up, Mom. I've got an awful lot to do. You've got an awful lot to do? What about me? Oh, honestly, you and your father. Well, Dr. Christian, um, have a cigar? No, thanks, no. I I can't stay but a minute. I, uh, I came over, Greg, to ask you to take the chairmanship of the new citizens' committee. Take the chairmanship? 
<laughs> Why, Dr. Christian, you know I don't go in for that sort of thing. Oh, it's time you did. We need you, Craig, and an interest like that would be good for you. I wouldn't even consider it. Oh, why not? You owe duty to your town, Craig. <laughs> I pay my taxes and vote at every election. Oh, but there's more to it than that, Craig. Oh, yes, I suppose so. But there are plenty of people who can do jobs like that, Dr. Christian. It just isn't in my line. Oh, you don't know until you've tried. No, thanks. See, the business just about runs itself nowadays. That leaves me free to do the things I want to do. Play with my boy, build shacks, go camping, work in my garden. Yeah, sounds very pleasant, Greg. But... I know, I know. It doesn't seem important to you. Eleanor feels the same way about it. She's chock full of ambition, that woman. Well, then won't you try it for her sake? Sorry, Dr. Christian, but I just couldn't. Now, some folks are meant to do one thing in this world and some another. When I get my picture in the papers in this town, it won't be as a civic leader. It'll be for raising the biggest Ponderoso tomatoes in River County. Well, Budge, did you have a good time? Mm, swell. Pretty good camping trip, wasn't it? Yeah. That mom will be surprised when she sees the fish we caught. I wish we could have stayed and cooked them over a campfire. I know, but we've got to get home before dark. Why? You haven't got anything to do. Uh, what? You haven't got anything to do, have you? Oh, I... Uh, no, no, I don't know that I have, but I... You never have anything to do. How come, Dad, you don't have to work like the other fellows for you? Why, I do work, Budge. I go to the office sometimes. Yeah, for about an hour. That ain't work. Gee, Ben's father goes to work at 8 o'clock every morning. He don't get home till 7. And one night he worked most all night. Oh. Uh, what does Ben's father do? He's a bookkeeper. Bill's father's important, too, I guess. Probably they couldn't run the grocery store without him at all. He travels. Oh, he does, eh? Yeah. Sometimes he's gone for five weeks. Why don't you ever go away, Dan? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Don't you like to have me at home with you? Sure, but I'd like to have her go away, too, and come with a present. Boy, wouldn't I rub it into old Bill Lynn. He wouldn't be thinking he was the only one whose father could go on a trip. <laughs> I thought you'd like to have me at home. Sure, it's nice sometimes. Dad? Well? Dad, what does prominent mean? Oh, it means, uh, well, uh, important, outstanding. Why? Well, I just wondered. Uh, but what way made you ask? Well, because, Dad, is it, is it because you well, you haven't got a job like other fathers that you well, you couldn't be prominent? What the dickens? <clears throat> what makes you think I can't be prominent, young man? Well, Dr. Christian, he and Mr. Summers were talking in front of Davis Drugstore last night, and Dr. Christian said he had asked you to be a, a chairman or something, but you said no, and they both laughed, and Mr. Summers said Dr. Christian was an optimist, and Dr. Christian said if... He was afraid you didn't just have the makings of a prominent citizen. Oh, he did, eh? Yeah. Uh, if you were prominent, would everybody take off their hats to you like they do to Mayor Hewitt? Would they, Dad? Dad, you think... Gee, what are you going so fast for? I want to get home. What for? I remembered I had something important to do. Work, you mean? Uh, yes, yes, work, Fudge. Uh, but what's the rush about? Are you going to do something yet tonight? I'll say I am, back. I'm going home to call up Dr. Christian. to ask all the merchants on Main Street to use uniform signs. And we've already got out a petition to extend the paving on South Street, and there are the improvements to the park this summer. Oh, the committee is a great success, Mrs. Meeks. Why, Mayor Ute is delighted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as Chairman Quake has become a leading citizen practically overnight. <laughs> I persuaded him to go back into the business, too. Oh, you simply wouldn't know him, Dr. Christian. He's working so hard. He's often at the office until midnight. Well, the Meeks Tent and Owning Company must be doing business. Oh, it <laughs> is. Of course, Miss Hand and his secretary is very efficient, but Greg's been letting things slide for so long, and there's lots for him to find out. I suppose so. Well, it's all worked out the way you wanted it to, hasn't it? Oh, it certainly has. Now, Dr. Christian, if you'll just look over those plans for furnishing the children's ward and let me have them back today with your suggestions. Oh, I'd be glad to. But, uh... <laughs> 
I thought Quake was the chairman of this committee. Seems to me you're doing a good deal of the work. Oh, I, I'd do anything to help Greg get ahead. Here, I'll leave these papers right here on your desk. What are they? Notes on things the committee is considering that I found on oh. Greg's desk at the office. Thought I might as well bring them over. I'm awfully sorry to interrupt, but Mayor Hewitt says he just has to see you before you go, Dr. Christian. And uh, you have a one o'clock appointment? Oh, I was just leaving. Goodbye, Dr. Christian. And let me know what you think of the plans. Goodbye, Judy. Goodbye, Mrs. Meeks. Goodbye, Mrs. Meeks. Phew, that woman's is a perfect dynamo. <laughs> <laughs> it? Well, it looks as though a little experiment worked, Judy. Yes? Eleanor is as happy as a lark, and Greco is really paying attention to business for the first time in his life. Uh. Oh, you better tell John to come in. All right, Doctor. Come on in, Mr. Hewitt. Okay, Judy. Hello, Dr. Christian. Sorry to barge in this way, but I... It's all right, I... John. Sit down. Oh, uh, I can't see anyone else, Judy, until office hours. <laughs> I'll guard you two with my life. Well, John, how are things? Terrible. What? I said terrible. Dr. Christian, this community is in for a Scandal? Scandal? What do you mean? Well, you know the contract the Meeks Company has with the government for tents for all these state camps? Well, of course I know it. That contract is going to make a lot of money for the stockholders. Yeah, it's more likely to land the stockholders in jail. Jail? Well, what do you mean? It's a contract with the government. Yes. It came through Richard Handon, didn't it? Yes, I guess it did. Some connection he has with the county officials. Richard Handon has been grafting off this state for years. Oh, people say so. Yeah, but... I know, but nobody ever caught him red-handed. But some of the things I know about him... Yeah, you know, I can't imagine Gregory Meeks getting mixed up with him. Well, what's happened to her? What's she done? I don't know exactly. That's why I came to you. All I know is that the order called for 12-ounce canvas. And Meeks is sending them eight. Oh, it's probably a mistake. It's not a mistake. The tents for Camp Goodwill were delivered last week, and I went out to look at them. Well, I know a little about canvas goods. They're lightweight. But, uh, didn't you tell Meeks? Of course I told him. And he looked me right in the eye and said the order was for 12-ounce canvas, and that was what we had. Dr. Christian, the Meeks Company, is delivering 8 ounces and collecting for 12 ounces and, and pocketing the difference. John, I can't believe it. Greg Meeks is no crook. No, but he's easygoing, and somebody probably put it over on him. What a mess. With him as head of our citizens' committee. And I went up to see him again this morning, but he was out and wouldn't be back all day. At least that's what that bossy secretary of his, Miss Handon, said. Who? Miss Handon. Handon? Oh, is she related to Richard Handon? Sure. She's a sister. Smart girl, too. Somehow I've never been able to like her. Because of her brother, I guess. You know, she... Say. Yes. I just had the same idea. John, do some, something for me, will you? Hmm? Uh, give me a chance to think about this. Let it rest until tomorrow. Well, I don't suppose a few hours will make any difference. But this is a bad piece of business, Dr. Christian. And you can be sure that Handon's protected himself thoroughly. Well, think it over and call me in the morning, huh? Goodbye, Goodbye John. Judy. Judy! Yes, Dr. Christian? Uh, Judy, do you know Doris Hanton? Of course. Oh, not well at all, but I know her. Why? Uh, Judy, you know I don't go in much for gossip, you know, but oh. uh, there's been some talk about... Uh, about um, about Doris Hanton and Mr. Meeks? Yes. And what are they saying? That Doris Hanton can wind him round her little finger. That she even got him to fire Fred Wilson, the superintendent. He'd been there all his life and knew every detail of the business. Well, why would she do that? So she can run things to suit herself. But uh, that isn't all, Dr. Christian. No? What else do they say? They say that while Mrs. Meeks thinks he's working late at the office every night, he's really over at Doris Hendon's house. <laughs> And the curtain is lowered on our Dr. Christian drama for a few seconds to denote the passing of time. In the interim, may I say a few words about the products which make this program possible. Why do so many women use Vaseline jelly to soothe hands made rough and chapped by housework? Because Vaseline jelly gives triple care. First, it forms a protective film which helps keep infection out when the skin is broken. Second, it promotes quick healing. Third, it softens and lubricates by supplementing the natural skin oil. Vaseline jelly is absolutely pure, free of all harmful ingredients, safe to use on the tenderest skin. Get a 10-cent jar or tube from your druggist tomorrow and save the carton. 
it may help you to win a free trip to the World's Fair or $250 in cash. Listen for the big news at the end of this program. Act two of our Dr. Christian drama, Mr. Meeks, starring Gene Hirschold as the beloved doctor of River's End. As the curtain rises, the scene is Mr. Meeks' office at the awning works, and his efficient secretary, Doris Handen, is just reaching for the telephone. Hello? This is Miss Handen. No, Mr. Meeks isn't here. No, I don't know. Yes, I'll tell him. Oh, Greg! Well, you frightened me. I thought you weren't coming back today. Greg, what's the matter? What's happened? Doris, the shipments on the camp tents are all eight-ounce canvas. Eight ounces? How did a mistake like that ever get by? Who sent the order to the factory? Why, it went the routine way. And Bates got the regular order slip? Why, why, of course. But who signed it? Why, didn't you? I never even saw it. Oh, Greg, please don't tramp around like this. This can't be so serious. Not serious? We deliver eight instead of 12-ounce canvas on the government order. You say it isn't serious. When John Hewitt told me the goods were inferior, I laughed in his face. But I went out today and had to look at it. And he's right. Uh, uh, get Bates for me. Now, Greg, please. You're getting all upset over nothing. Nothing? You call this nothing? Uh, give me a phone. Oh, Greg, no, please. I'm certainly sick if I'm going to have to fire Bates already. Wilson was here 20 years, never made a blunder like this. Oh, darn nation, why doesn't somebody answer? Well, I expect everyone's gone. It's after five now. Oh, listen, Greg, put the phone down a minute and let me explain. Explain what? Well, it, it's about Bates. Well, what about him? Oh, Greg, please don't be angry at Bates. You see, he... Now, 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 look here, Doris. Are you trying to shield Bates? No, no, Greg, I'm not. But I'm sure if you'll only listen calmly, you'll see how it could all have happened. Very well. Out with it. Well, you see, Bates came in here the other day with that order in his hand and said he wanted to see you about it. Well, I expected you in any minute, so I told him to leave it on your desk with some other things I had there for you and... Then I was called out for half an hour. When I came back, you still hadn't showed up, so I finished up your letters. That was on Thursday. And you know, you never did come back. I know. I had to get my seedlings in the ground. Well, I began to worry about the time we were losing on a rush job, so I decided to send the order back and tell Bates to go ahead with it. But when I looked for it, it was gone. Gone? Absolutely. I sent for Bates, and he said the last he'd seen it was right there on the pile. Well, so we hunted high and low for it, and it simply wasn't to be found. But why didn't you tell me? Well, you've always trusted me to run things, and as I knew the whole deal would be off if we couldn't get deliveries on time, I, I just told Bates to go ahead without the order, since he already knew just what was in it, and I suppose that's how he came to use the 8-ounce canvas instead of the 12. Well, he swore that's what the order said, and as your signature was on it... But I never even saw the order, much less signed it. Well, it's just a mistake in any case... No one could accuse Bates of deliberately... Uh, uh, what do you mean? Oh, I, I don't mean a thing. Bates made a mistake in judgment, that's all. He was afraid to use 12 ounce when he thought the order said 8. So he went ahead with the 8. But good heavens, girl, oh, don't now you... now don't worry. The thing to do is to duplicate the order at once. Yes, yes, I guess that's the best we can do. It'll mean overtime pay, but we've got to make good. Uh, try Bates at his house, will you? Yes. Have him round up the men. Okay. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Bates there? This is the plant calling. What? Oh, he has. When? Well, when do you expect him back? I see. No, no, the switchboard shut down. I'll call him. Is he out? Yes, he's gone up the river fishing. Good afternoon, Miss Hanton. Oh, good afternoon, Dr. Christian. Mr. Meeks isn't in. No, I knew he wasn't. It's you I want to see. Me? What can I do for you? Oh, you can answer a few questions for me, if you will. Well, I'd be glad to. It's about the order for the tents. Uh, the ones you sent directly to Camp Goodwill. Oh. Well, I would know a thing about that. You'll have to ask Mr. Meeks. Hey, Greg always tells me he leaves everything to you. You remember the original order on that, Miss Hanton? Mm, yes, vaguely. Well, uh, clearly enough to be sure it specified 12-ounce canvas. Did it? The equipment or seat is eight. Oh, no. We, we couldn't have made a blunder like that while we were always... Was it a blunder, Miss Hanton? Well, we have a new superintendent, but he's very efficient. I can't imagine that he'd let a thing like that happen. Then you think the substitution must have been made deliberately? 
Oh, I didn't say that. I don't see how... Dr. Christian, what are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I'm only trying to find out the truth. You know, Miss Hampton, it wouldn't be the first time that one grade of goods had been ordered and another delivered. I don't know what you mean. I mean we've been trying to clean up the political situation in this county for a long time. There's still grafting going on, and a great deal of it. You've known it, but you've never been able to prove it. Grafting? Dr. Christian, are you insinuating? I'm only telling you that the government ordered and paid for one grade of canvas and got another. And the fact puts the Meeks Company in a very awkward position. Miss Hanton, wouldn't you like to give me your explanation of all this? Why, I haven't any. Well, wouldn't you be able to invent one, do you think, if I told you your brother had confessed? Confessed? He didn't. He wouldn't dare. Or if he... I don't know what you mean, Dr. Christian. My brother hasn't anything to confess. Not even that for a long time he's been the go-between and buying inferior goods at high prices for the government and then splitting the difference with his confederates? <sighs> Not even that it was his idea to deliver this lightweight canvas. And that because he knew Great Mix was too honest to play, he got you in here as secretary so that you could change the orders? I didn't. I didn't. He did it himself. I never wrote a thing. Oh, then the fourth signature on the factory order was your brother's and not yours, eh? Of course it was. I wouldn't do a thing like that. It was too risky. He made me come here, but I wasn't going to be the one to fake anybody's signature. All you were supposed to do was to destroy all the papers when the job was done. Your job was to win Great Meek's friendship and keep him from becoming suspicious. If Gregory Meeks likes me, that's my business. I'm only wondering how well he'll like you when he hears the truth. The truth? Oh, Dr. Christian, do you mean he's going to find out? That everybody will know? Yes, they probably will. Just as soon as I can turn this information, you've given me over to the authority. Information I've given you? Why, you said that... I know. I'm afraid I misled you. But I found this factory order among some papers that Mrs. Meeks brought to my office. I didn't think the signature was Greg's, so I must say it's a very, very good imitation. You see, I've suspected Richard Hanton for a long time. Oh, that's where the factory order went to. And you came here and trapped me. Trapped me into betraying my own brother. Well, you can't prove a thing, Dr. Christian. I'll deny everything I've told you. I'll swear it's all a lie. Mm, that won't do you much good, Miss Hanton. You see, our conversation's been overheard. What? I left the door a little ajar. Oh, come on in, John. <sighs> Did you get a complete record? Yes, I got every word of it, Dr. Christian. You should have been a detective. <laughs> you beasts! Of all the dirty tricks! It wasn't very kind, was it? But it was the only way I could think of. It wasn't my fault, I tell you. Oh, Dr. Christian, I'm sure you know that I didn't mean to do anything wrong. You're always so kind-hearted and generous. Dr. Christian's kind heart can't save you this time, Miss Hand. Oh, it's all just terrible. Dr. Christian, what am I going to do? You're going to put on your hat, Miss Hanton. We have a call to make at the courthouse. lost, and you don't even know who signed it? Well, Bates said it was my signature, but I'm sure I never saw the thing, Eleanor. You mean you never checked on the order at all? Well, I intended to, oh. but I... Greg. Greg, how could a thing like this happen with all the time you've been spending at the office lately? Why, uh, why, I don't know. You've been down there working, night after night for weeks. And you didn't even check on the most important order you have. Well, I... I Greg, was... people have been... have been saying things to me lately. Funny things. Dropping hints. Oh, I... I didn't believe them, of course. Imagine anyone telling me you were at Miss Handon's house when you were supposed to be at the office. But, uh... You... You never have been at her house, have you? Uh, well, have I, you? Uh... I, uh, yes, yes, I have, Eleanor. Not in the evening when, when you were supposed to be working? W uh, yes, I, yes, I have. Greg, you, you haven't been there every evening, all this time. Oh, Eleanor, I'm sorry if it makes you feel bad. But... Feel bad? You've been with her night after night for weeks. Greg, I can't believe it, but you... Gregory Meeks. 
do you mean? Eleanor, hush, there's someone at the door. Oh, oh, Dr. Christian. Uh, Hewitt, come on in. Uh, glad to see you. We won't stop it for a minute, Greg. We came on a matter of business. Well, <clears throat> first I want to return this. It was in with the papers Mrs. Meeks brought me the other morning. The factory order? Why, how on earth... Dr. Christian, you don't know what this means, this order. Oh, yes, I do. Is that your signature? No. I never saw this order before, but I want... That's to... what we thought. Hmm. Greg... Hanton and his sister were trying the same old bit of graft, but this time it didn't work. They confessed. Confessed? Doris has confessed? Now, you see, that's the kind of woman you've been having an affair with. That's the kind of woman. Oh, now, Mrs. Meeks. Dr. Christian, he has, he has. Greg's been at her house every night when I thought he was working. Well, I know I shouldn't have done it, Eleanor, but you just wouldn't let me look at the seed catalogs here at home. Seed catalogs? What? Was that what you were doing? Of course. You said I couldn't have them around the house anymore. You have been listening to Gene Hersholt's Dr. Christian drama, Mr. Meeks. Mr. Hersholt will be out here to tell you something about next week's story before we sign off. And now for the big news about a new, easy-to-enter contest in which 100 people will win free trips to either the New York World's Fair or the San Francisco Fair with $150 spending money thrown into the bargain. Or, if you prefer, $250 in cash instead. 100 first prizes and 5,000 second prizes besides. First, decide which fair you want to see. Then write a letter which begins this way. I want to see the World's Fair because... And finish it in 50 words or less. Just state your reasons simply and sincerely. Then attach to your letter a carton, wrapper, or label tracing from Vaseline Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, or any other product sold under the trademark Vaseline, or any Colgate Palm Olive Toiletry. Mail your entry to Vaseline Products, 17 State Street, New York City. You can enter this contest as many times as you wish, but all entries must be postmarked before midnight, May 15th. Start writing the first letter tonight. Remember, with just 50 words and the carton from a Vaseline preparation, you may write your own ticket to the vacation of a lifetime. Entry blanks with full details are available at drugstores or by mail, but your entry on plain paper is perfectly acceptable. Remember to address Vaseline Products, 17 State Street, New York City. The artists whom you heard tonight included Margaret Brayton as Eleanor Meeks, Gail Gordon as Gregory Meeks, Jerry Moore as John Hewitt, Eric Burtis as Budge Meeks, Inez Seabury as Doris Handon, Rosemary DeCamp, our popular Judy Price, and, of course, our star, Jean Hersholt, as Dr. Christian. <laughs> Dr. Christian, tell us something about next week's story. Well, <clears throat> you know, I've been noticing lately that Judy seems to have something on her mind. And I wouldn't be surprised if we find out next week just what it is. I'll tell you this much, though. The play is called Spring is Here. And so until next Tuesday at this same hour, I'll say good night. Don't fail to listen to Jane Herschel's Dr. Christian drama next Tuesday at this same time. It is called Spring is Here. This is Arthur Gilmore bidding you good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.